everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about vlogging cameras. We're going to talk about the topic in general. We're also going to talk about a couple of models in specific. Now, before you click off the channel thinking it's going to be the same old tired thing that you're just about fed up with hearing about, oh, I'm going to wrap up both rants and reviews all in this short little pontification coming up right after this. So stick around. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And uh, if you showed up here, you were probably searching for best vlogging camera. You were searching for, uh, you know, maybe you're doing your research to start a review channel or a vlog or something to that effect. And so I thought I'd share my experiences with you. Uh, my experiences have been an absolutely painstaking process. Now, first of all, in the topic of vlogging, you know, again, a lot of people are looking at starting a channel, they want to get their information out there, maybe they just want to communicate with family, maybe they, you know, they, everybody's got different uh, purposes behind it. Um, and you have to assess your own purpose. What are you hoping to achieve out of this camera? Are you going to be out and about? Are you taking it for travel to document your travels? Are you going to be out and about on the streets? You know, if, if you are, if you're going to use it to travel, you know, I would recommend against you bringing a $2,000 DSLR with you. That's a, a theft target, you know, and it's cumbersome to carry around. But if your purpose is vlogging, if you want something that you can take portable, you know, that's, that's going to be out there for you, uh, you know, I'm going to say something that I think is going to ruffle a lot of feathers and I'm going to get a lot of comments about, okay? First of all, let's talk about the criteria. What, what I think a vlogging camera needs to be, do, and have. Okay, uh, the first thing, first topic is going to be 4K. Well, again, everybody, at least with the large subscriberships out there, they're jumping on that bandwagon now. They're starting to do 4K. YouTube is starting to support it. In my opinion, I don't think 4K is going to be there and be the true standard probably for at least another year out. The second thing that I think a vlog camera needs to have is either a flip up or a flip down screen. Uh, I don't like the idea of articulating screens. The reason why is because articulating screens are very awkward to frame your shot in. Okay, it, when you have an articulating screen, you're looking off to the side of the lens every time you want to frame something and it looks like this. You know, if, if, if you can't see that, you can blow up the video and I'm sure you'll see your, your eyes, are, it's making you look like you're crazy. You know, you're always looking off. You're looking, you're looking past your audience and that's a bad thing, okay? Flip up and flip down screens are much more natural. They really have a much more natural appearance. So if you need to frame your shot, if you need to see what you're doing, if you need to get something lined up or, you know, you, you need to, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, they're much more friendly to this. You can look at the screen, you can look at the monitor without looking like you're looking past your audience. The other thing a vlogging camera must have is an audio input. I hate when people call a camera a vlogging camera and it doesn't have an audio input. You know, at some point you're going to be running into traffic noise, you're going to be running into, you know, noises in the house, this kind of stuff. You have to have good audio, guys, and that's something you're going to hear all over YouTube. You've got to have good audio if you expect people to watch it. Now, with that in mind, let's get into some specific cameras. The one that I'm recording this video on is the Canon EOS M3. I bought the international version that came with the, not the 18 to 55 that most of the base level kits come with. This thing came with the 15 to 45 lens. The international version cam. Now, if you don't know what that is, when you're browsing Amazon and you see this international version, you know, label on the descriptions, sometimes it might be preset for a different codec. For example, maybe the color index is PAL instead of NTSC, you know, something to that effect. That's what you're looking at when you're looking at these international models of cameras. The international lens, it simply means it doesn't come with any supported USA warranty with it. Anyway, the whole package out the door, um, 519 bucks. But right now, at the time of this recording, the Canon EOS M3 is about bit ready to be Put out, you know, put out to pasture, and 
it's going to be replaced probably by the M100 and a few other models. Um, but anyway, the video that you're looking at is this international version Canon, Canon EOS M3 uh, with the kit lens straight out of the box. The one con that I found to this particular camera. The autofocus is like slower than molasses running uphill on a cold January morning as my daddy used to say. Okay, the, the autofocus is incredibly slow on this camera. Okay, now another camera that I can recommend pretty highly is from a company that I've been a, a fan of for quite a while and the company is Olympus. Now Olympus and Panasonic have teamed up quite a while ago in the development of the Micro Four Thirds format. And what's cool about that is that you can actually use a lot of Olympus lenses on Panasonic cameras and vice versa. Now the specific camera that I have here and this little setup this is the Olympus Pen EPL8 and the EPL8 what's different about it you're going to see is that it has a downward facing screen. Now th this camera had kind of lost a lot of people in the enthusiast market because they kind of termed this the selfie window. They, they marketed it as the selfie camera <laughs> and they kind of shot themselves in the foot I think. It had a bad stigma to it. But make no mistake, this is an enthusiast level camera. This is some excellent video quality that che checks all the boxes. Um, all but one, really, it doesn't have an audio input on it natively. However, Olympus did create this little gem for it. Let me get this off of here. Okay, this adapter is called the SEMA 1 and it actually comes with a stereo microphone that pops into that jack that gives you only marginally better video than what's on board the camera already. So most people they buy it for the adapter and they end up you know not using the little stereo mic that plugs into it because the adapter works with anything. So, But that's all it is. Standard 3.5 millimeter jack and has this little what I forget they call it a smart port or multi port something like that and it, it plugs in. Now all the pen cameras have this so if you have a pen 5, 6, 7 they all have this, this smart port on it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So it, it's not just for this one camera. But yeah, the Pen EPL8. And again, the 7, you know, is, was good too. It's only, you know, most people say there's not a lot of difference. And, you know, the changes are mostly cosmetic from 7 to 8. But yeah, this is the package here. The bracket came from Amazon, maybe 15 bucks tops. Uh, very good quality. You can see that with this bracket and mounting it this way, it doesn't hinder you from getting and seeing the screen well enough. Okay, uh, that's why I mount the, the tripod quick release shoe over here. So that's the, the quick release for my tripod is, is on over here. And you can see that with this bracket I have two other connectors. So not only can, now usually I would have my Beach Tech preamp here. Um, I don't typically use these kind of mics, it's just for demonstration purposes uh, anymore. This is an old mic. Um, but my Beach Tech would be mounted here and possibly a video light if I need it could be mounted over here. Um, but this is a fantastic camera. Now the lens that's on here is not the kit lens. This lens is the Panasonic 25 millimeter. The kit lens that comes with it is actually about, only comes to about here. It's a pancake lens and it only comes to about where this ridge is, at, you know, at the bottom ridge of that lens. So it's a very, if you're looking for something to travel with, something compact, I mean, this is it. This tech ticks all the check boxes and it it's going to give you some great video quality. Uh, but, it, you know, like I said, it does get overlooked. Um, also, uh, I believe this is another international version of a camera. Um, I, I picked this up and I think it does tell me when I'm running an NTSC because it wants to be in PAL because that's the uh, European format. Um, so you, you do, you know, like I said, international version stuff is not bad uh, unless you're really needing that warranty from the company. You do get a warranty from the seller uh, and you can always contact the seller and verify, make sure that they commit to, that, that they will give you a warranty with them. But if the seller is coming from overseas, you cannot, they cannot warranty it in America with that manufacturer. So that's where the problem is, uh, you know, with these international versions. 
But other than that, you know, I, I've purchased actually a lot of international version stuff without warranty, and I, you know, luckily, knock on wood, it's been solid. And that's that's where this setup had come from. But yeah, the Olympus EPL8. This thing is another great version if you need something compact that ticks all those vlogging checkboxes.